after you put so much time and care into your punching, you want to spend an equal amount of care with your finishing. I'm going to show you how we finish ours here. I just cut off um, the monk's cloth two inches all the way around and fold it under to make a nice hem. When I teach hemming, I usually say, oh, it's as easy as hemming a pair of pants. And there's always someone in class who says, but I duct tape my pants. Don't worry, this is really simple sewing. I can't emphasize enough the importance of finishing your piece really in a professional way. I judge rugs at the county fair and you can have a gorgeous rug on the top but if the back side of it is sloppy you really lose points. One of the first thing a craftsperson will do if they look at your work is to look at the back. So you want to impress them and surprise them and have your back look just as good as the front. Here's what you'll need. A sharpie or other marker, a ruler, nice sharp scissors, a long thin needle. This is about two and a quarter inches long. It's a number 14 and I usually find them in the package of darning needles. Some sturdy thread. This is button and craft thread. Another thing I love to use is strands of the monk's cloth that pull right out. They're fabulous and strong for sewing. Pins and iron. And this last item is optional, but it's a big sweater depiller, and it works very well for taking the fuzz off the top of your rug, but not a necessity. This first step isn't essential, but I wanted to share it with you because it does give wonderful results. After you're done punching, the surface of your rug will be all fuzzy. It'll be covered with all these little um, hairs and there's a great technique for removing those and what it does is it makes your colors look crisper and the image look uh, sharper. So let me show you that. This is a sweater D pillar. It's quite a large one. They also make little pocket size ones and what we're going to do we're going to rub the surface of the rug and it's not going to cut the loops. It's just going to take all that fuzz off the top. If you have unusual novelty yarns I wouldn't do that but with this wool rug yarn it works really well. So we're just going to give it a little shave. and all it really does is brighten up the colors and there's quite a bit of lint here in this um, little case so that's how we know it's done its job. As I say this isn't essential but it's a nice touch. Be careful taking your monk's cloth off the frame as you know these little barbs are sharp on the gripper frame but if you just release two sides you'll find that the rest just peels right off. We're going to steam press our piece because you can see when it comes off the frame it's all puffy like a little pillow and the steam pressing will flatten it right out. Also if you have any, any uneven loops, not that you would, but in case you know someone who has uneven loops, you can tell them about this steam pressing because it works like a charm. I've just got a regular bath towel that I've run under cold water and I'm going to put it on top here. And I've got my iron set on high, which is the cotton setting. You don't need to put water in it and set it for steam. The hot iron and the cold towel is going to make plenty of steam. I'm going to steam press each spot for 15 seconds or so. Now I know the temperature of my iron and that 15 seconds is good, but you test your iron first for shorter periods of time. I'm going to put it in one spot and press down quite hard for 15 seconds. And as you can see, it makes a nice amount of steam. You can give yourself a little facial. And when you lift the iron up, let it reheat again. And you're going to go ahead and press the whole piece in that way. Now, if you find you're not getting 
a lot of steam, just make your towel a little bit wetter. And now for the unveiling. Look at that, it's nice and flat and ready to hem. We're gonna let it dry before we go on to the next step. Our pair is now dry and to finish a square or rectangular piece, I like to use a mitered corner. A mitered corner is when two sides come together to form a 45 degree angle. The first thing we're gonna do is have a look at our monk's cloth and you can see there are places where the gripper strip from the frame has stretched out the holes in the monk's cloth. So I like to take a pin or the tip of my pointy scissors or the tip of your punch needle and just kind of work those back together so you don't have gaps in your backing. Next we're going to cut off our excess monk's cloth and I'm going to cut it so that we have two inches of backing all the way around. So we're going to take our ruler and put a little mark at two inches. And then we'll join those together to make our cut line. There's another kind of a ruler that I like. It's a two inch wide ruler. And you can also make one yourself out of cardboard. I've just cut out a two inch wide piece of cardboard and I'm gonna do it like this. It's just a little quicker and easier. When you're using this ruler, you wanna make sure that you tuck it under so that it's nice and straight. And then you're ready to mark. Next, we'll cut right along that line. And you don't need to serge or sew these edges in any way. We're just gonna work with these raw edges so we'll get the extra threads off of there. Next, we want to cut these corners off to get rid of the excess fabric. So we're going to mark it three quarters of an inch with our ruler. We're just going to put a little dot. And then I like to make a line so that you have an equal amount of fabric from here to here so it makes a nice triangle for your cutting line. And we'll go ahead and mark all four corners. And then we'll cut right along those lines. Our corners are all cut. So we're gonna turn our piece over and fold the corner in like this. You don't wanna pull on it too much. You don't want the loops to fold under and you also don't want it too loose so you see the monk's cloth. Just fold it enough so this little loop is laying on its side. You want to fold it so that you have equal amounts of monk's cloth from here to here and here to here. And now we are going to press it. I have my iron set on high. And making these creases ahead of time will just make it much easier to bring our mitered corners together. We folded our corners and next we'll fold our sides. Just gonna pull it back like that. Make sure when you do this that you don't pull it too much. You don't want those loops to curl under. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, you don't wanna leave this so loose that when your rug is on the floor or your wall hanging is on the wall that you can see the monk's cloth showing. So find a happy medium where this row of stitches is just laying on its side, and that will be just right. And now I'm going to press, and I wanna press it away 
from the loops because that will help to reinforce that nice crisp edge. We're going to fold this over a second time to make a nice one inch hem and you want to have the edge of your monk's cloth just come right up to the edge of your punching. And we're going to press this and then press all four sides. Now we're going to pin down our hem and what I like to do is just line these up a little bit. Take my pin and make sure those corners are touching. And pin one side in place. Double check again that the corners line up. And pin it again. Make sure that your pin is dipping down all the way into the yarn underneath. And when we go to sew, we will actually sew this shut, so don't worry if there's a little bit of an opening there. If you're making a larger rug, you might want to put more pins in the side just to secure it all the way around, but this is a small enough piece that that is plenty enough pins to hold it in place. After you've pinned it, turn it over and have a look at it sideways and make sure that you can't see your hem sticking out. You don't want to see your monk's cloth showing. But I don't see any, so I think that looks great and I am ready to sew. To sew down my hem, I'm going to use black button and craft thread so you can see my stitches better. They'll look more like Frankenstein stitches in the black, but when you do them in white, they'll barely show at all. I've made my thread about a yard long, and I've made a nice big fat knot at the bottom. If you don't have a big knot, when you pull your first stitch, it'll pull right out at the backing. The stitch I'm going to use is a whip stitch, and I'm gonna take this pin out so it's not in my way, and what I do is my very first stitch, I come in from underneath and I'm going to go about two holes in in the backing. In other words, don't make a really big stitch, you know, coming out there. Just a nice little stitch is all you need. We're going to pull up on it and that will get our knot underneath. If it's sticking out, just tuck it in like that. So for our whip stitch, we're actually going to go straight here. We're going to put our needle straight in front of that little place where it's coming out. And to make our next stitch, we're going to go like that, about a half an inch. It doesn't have to be exact, just approximate. And we're going to pull that, and we're going to pull it nice and tight. If this is loose and your rug is on the floor, you'll be able to pull it out. So make sure you get it nice and tight. So I'm about two holes up again. I'm going to put my needle straight in front. Now when you put your needle in, make sure that you're not just catching yarn because that isn't really anchored to anything. You want to dip your needle down in so you're really in that monk's cloth and you will know when you are because it's a little bit harder to punch. Make sure obviously that you don't come out the other side or your stitches will show. You're just going to dip into that monk's cloth. So again, I'm here, I'm going to go right in front of it, and I'm going to dip down into the backing, go approximately half an inch, pull it nice and snug, go straight in front of that, about half an inch, come up about two holes up. sew this corner shut. I'm going to take this pin out because it's in my way. And don't worry, as I mentioned before, if this is open a little bit because we're going to sew that shut. So I'm going to make my next stitch so I come out right in that corner. Right about there. I'm going to pull it nice and tight. And then I'm going to sew this shut 
When I do that, I'm not dipping my needle down into the backing. I'm just gathering these two pieces and joining them together. So here we go. I like to make a nice little stitch like that. And pull it nice and tight. And then I make these stitches a little bit smaller. That's probably about a quarter inch. Now if you're a sewer or a quilter, you know how to make beautiful stitches and you might even want to do it in a slightly different way. And that's fine. As long as it looks nice and it's a nice strong sturdy stitch, you can sew it down any way you like. I even have one friend who likes her stitches to show and she does it in pretty colorful yarn that matches her rug. A pretty colorful thread and that looks nice too. Just because I do it this way doesn't mean you can't come up with your own way of doing it. So as I get into the corner where it's open, I'm just going to pull and pull it shut. I keep snagging on that corner. So we're almost shut. Got that little gap. There. Now that's a nice tidy corner. It'll look better with white thread. <laughs> now, to get out here, I'm just going to run my needle underneath through the little opening in the monk's cloth. And don't come out too far like that. You want it so that it will barely show. I'm going to come out in that corner right about there. I'm going to pull it out. And then you're ready to start up again with your whip stitch. With your stitches about half an inch apart. I make my nice little stitch, dip down into the monk's cloth, go about two holes up this way. You may need to re-thread your needle if you run out of thread. And that's all there is to it. And then I will just keep going around until I've done the whole thing. I am out of thread, so what I like to do to end is just to make a little knot here. And I go through there like that. And I push down on it to get a nice little knot right next to the monk's cloth, and I usually do it twice. And pull it so it's like that. Put your finger on top and pull on it, and that will be enough to secure it. And when you're using white thread, it won't show at all. You can cut it a little closer too if you want. More like that and no one will ever see it. And then you re-thread and you're ready to go again. Okay, I'm ready to end. I'm just going to tie a nice little knot. You can tie a knot another way. And then I'm going to cut it off. And as you can see from my black thread, your stitches don't have to be perfect. Because when you're done with the white thread, they'll barely show at all. This will give you a nice sturdy hem that will hold up well when your rug is on the floor. 
If you've read my book, you might recognize this little lamb and you rug. This is the one where the baby lamb looks like a hamster. You might recognize him. What I decided to do was to make this piece into a wall hanging, and I made up a fun little trick, which is to sew the mitered corners together at the bottom, but at the top I've left them open so I could insert a dowel. I'll take the dowel out so you can see what I've done. All I've done is not sewn this shut, and I put some extra stitches here, three or four whip stitches, just to make sure that that's securely anchored into place. One final step, I think it's important to us as fiber artists to leave a record of who made our work. You can embroider your name and the date on the back or use cross stitch. You can make yourself a lovely label. I'm just going to write my name and date with a Sharpie and give it my signature.